Hello guys. Welcome to my basement craft room. So this time I want to do some picture frames. So we're going to, we are going to be using my one inch pine, uh, boards and we're going to be cutting these down. I want to make some picture frames with them. They're going to be rustic, rustic farmhouse. Not really sure how I'm going to paint them up yet. I know I do want to antique them or stain them. Um, I am going to go get this cut up. I need to measure up my pictures and see how big I want these frames to be. And then I will get them cut up and we'll go upstairs and do the rest up there and get out of my messy, my messy craft area in the basement. <laughs> Hopefully you can see me okay. Um, so now I'm going to show you why I like this Waverly Antique Wax for this. It's pretty thick and I would assume the longer you leave it on the board, the darker it will get. That's before I wipe it off. So you put this on and then you wipe it off. I go with the grain. I put the stain on with the grain and I wipe with the grain. That way it gets it in there. But look at that beautiful color. See how pretty that is? It's a nice brown, nice brown color. I don't know, I like it. Some people like the lighter. And I do too, it all depends on the project, but I think what I'm gonna do with this, um, the darker color is going to look nicer. All right, so just put it on there and then wipe it off just with a rag. This is like an old t-shirt. It's dirty because I've already done the other three so that I can get those drying a little bit before I start to use them. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of, we're gonna do white Waverly paint. The Waverly chalk white paint. We're going to do uh, a little bit of that and I've got these, and no, I don't clean my stencils. Uh, evidently last time I used it, I did not clean it. Um, so we're gonna be, use this, and I'm gonna use some of these on here as the background before I put the pictures on. And uh, I think that'll make it stand out, and I'm gonna use the Waverly white paint on top of this nice dark wood. I think it's gonna pop really good, and I'm excited to see it. So I think I'll go down the sides and across the top. I think that'll look cute. And then I've got a um, twine bow that I'm gonna make potentially and put that in the corner here, I'm thinking. I also have this really pretty uh, ribbon that I got from Dollar Dollar Tree, I believe. Yeah, it was Dollar Tree. Um, and it's so pretty. And I think it would look really nice with some of these um, and against this dark color. So what I have, and I'm gonna use this, is a um, 
makeup sponge, I believe is what it is. And I am going to dip it in my paint and then dab it off on my paper towel and then pounce up and down. Now there is a trick that you can use because I don't have, I usually have a dauber thing, but I don't have one today. Um, I've used them all up in previous and I haven't bought any more. But um, this is gonna take me forever doing it this way. But there is a trick you can do to help when you do stencils to help them not bleed through, which I'm gonna take a peek and see. No, it's all right, I guess. Um, probably gonna have to do two coats because I don't wanna make it too juicy and have it um, bleed. But the trick is if you, which I did not do, if you take your Mod Podge and put it all over your project that you're going to stencil, first let it dry, then do your stamping or your stenciling, it won't bleed. I've tried it before, it does work. But because I'm so low on Mod Podge, I did not want it to, I didn't want to use it all up. Okay, so this one's done and it's dry. And so I want to put a picture of my beautiful daughter and her handsome husband on there. So I'm just going to kind of center it in the middle like so. And then you got the little stencil on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to take my brush. I want to make sure it's dry because I washed it a little while ago. And I just don't want any, because I used it for white paint. I switched over from this stenciling to this. It works so much better. Um, but I don't want any white on that brush for the Mod Podge, because then it won't dry clear. So that won't be very good. So, Mod Podge. I'm making sure, because I have white and Mod Podge out. They look the same. <laughs> okay. So I'm just putting it on the back of my picture. Have you guys ever done that? Thought it was Mod Podge or something else and you used it and found out it wasn't what you thought it was? Okay, so we're going to put it in the middle-ish and kind of rub it down a little bit. Okay, there it's stuck on. Okay, I think. Sand these edges just a little, just to define them, just to define them a little bit. I did not sand the um, the stencil, the paint. It's chalk paint, so unless you seal your product first and then stencil over it, you're going to get a powdery residue that's going to stick to your paint or your stain. Um, and so you don't really want to do that 
I usually like to distress, but because I'm so low on Mod Podge, I didn't, I changed my mind and decided I was just going to put the stencil on there and then seal it. I was not going to distress the actual stencil, even though I'd love to. Um, I don't want it to powder onto my, um, onto my stain. But I did scuff up the edges a little bit. I don't know if you can see. Just kind of scuffed up the edges so that it just kind of defines it. And then I'm just going to dip this in and I'm going to go in the same direction back and forth on this picture over the top. And this is going to seal. Now when I put it on the back of the picture, it glued the picture down. I'm going to go along this edge. If you go along this over the top of it, you are sealing the top. So this is going on milky, but when it dries, it'll be clear. So just go the same direction, the strokes in the same direction, and that way um, you make sure you hit all the spots. There we go. Okay, so that's what I mean by it's going to look milky, but then once you, um, once it dries, it'll be clear and there'll be a nice seal on it. Now this is matte Mod Podge. All right, and let's see, we'll put my husband and my granddaughter in this one. There's that one. So we're just going to put them right in the middle again. Um, actually... I may do it a little bit lower. I may do it a little lower because I think I may put something over the top here. Not sure. You know, you can play around with it, whatever you like. You can kitty corner it if you wanted to. You could do a kitty corner like that. That would look cool too. You can do whatever you like if you decide you want to do this. Um, but I'm going to center it, I believe. So I'm going to do that. So we're going to, again, take the Mod Podge and we're going to put it on the back of my picture. I mean, or you could put it on the, the wood. It's up to you. It's all in preference again. It'll end up pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to go along the edges. That's the only time that I don't go back and forth in the same direction is when I go along the edges. But you want to get it on that, that picture nice so it will stay down. Right? Set that one aside so it'll dry. Now I'll show you how I know about paint and if you chalk paint. I mean, I knew this before, but I thought that I could get away with it. Again, rules, and I like to break them evidently. Here we go. So I did the stencil on here. I tried sanding it down with my block and it left a residue. If you can see, it's kind of like a a smudge it almost looks like. So I wiped it down and then I took my antique wax, this stuff, put a little bit on a, I don't know, a rag, paper towel, I can't remember, um, and just went over it to darken it up so you couldn't tell. You still can tell, but it almost looks intentional to me. And it's not as bad as it was. It was like white smudge. So I like it. I'm going to use it. I think it's going to be pretty. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make these cute little bows uh, out of twine. So you take your twine and you wrap it around, depending on how big you want it, around your fingers. I'm using three fingers 
and as you wrap them around I do oh about seven or eight times around not too tight because you want to be able to slide it off your fingers and you're gonna go and cut a piece off so that you can tie it around it and you want it long enough so that you're gonna make three of these little bunches of loops so you want it long enough so you can tie those on or you could glue it it doesn't really matter and I trim the little ends if they're sticking out too far and then you spread out the loops a little bit and then you go ahead and you make another set of loops you want three I'm telling you right there so you make those and then you smoosh it together in the middle and you lay it opposite of the other set of loops and you tie that on or glue it and then you spread them out a little bit and then just trim the little end because sometimes it sticks out and you just spread those loops out a little bit and then you're gonna make one more set of loops that you're gonna tie on there there you go and you're gonna do that again in an opposite direction of the other two so as you spread the loops out it's going to make one continuous circle of loops and they're going to look like little petals all the way around so there's there you go there and then I just cut a piece of this ribbon or lace a couple of pieces of those to lay on the back to just kind of make it pop away from the frame when I put it down and I'm just doing this while the frames are drying. Uh, it takes a little while for those frames to dry, so I just glue these pieces of lace on there. And then once that dries, I'm going to pick a light colored button to go on top. I just trim the edges a little bit and clean them up. I think I need sharper scissors. <laughs> So here I just look in my little button container here and I find a light colored button and I put that right on top to finish it off. So I want to put these on to um, each frame in some way. To make them stand out and look really nice. There we go. And then once that sticks, you can just fluff your little flower up a little bit and move those, those petals around. So there's that one. And we'll stand them up in a minute. I just want to get that so that it sticks down really good. And then this one. that gonna stay okay I wanted to staple a little hanger on there like so let me cut that off and that kind of will go with the the theme you could glue this on sorry about the noise that probably maybe I'll do one closer up to the top all right there we go with a little hanger I think that looks so cute I go around on the bottom a few times I kind of like that so yeah, that's pretty cute. Um, so I may do that. Actually, I could do that right now. And I may just staple that in and that way I know it's gonna stay. It's not like it's a holder or anything, but it just adds a little decorative touch. And I think that's pretty neat. So let me cut that off. 
and I want to make sure that's tight. I'll flatten that out. And then just kind of stretch that out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of them, I think, and dress them up a little bit. And we'll come back and look at the finished product. Thanks for stopping by and watching my picture frame video. If you enjoyed it, would you please go down and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell for future videos. Smash the like button. And leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and take care. We'll see you on the next one.